Right, welcome to video 6. So in this video we uh, are assuming you've already done what's on the screen in front of you here, that you've exported all these panels, uh, coloured them blue in the appropriate places, drawn your outline for the acrylic light up part, uh, done your engraved lines, coloured any internal cuts blue, done all of this and saved it. Okay, And we're also assuming you've got a full inventor model as well. Um, what we're going to do though, in this one we're going to take this shape and put it into Inventor, so our Inventor model looks more realistic. Uh, we're also going to add in a battery pack and a USB cable in Inventor to your model to make it look more professional. And then uh, we're going to take some screenshots of your Inventor model for evidence in your folder so I can mark how well you did with this project. Okay, So really well done if you're at video 5, you've already achieved all you need to for this project. Video 6, which we're on now, is kind of the extension. Uh, but actually I would like you all to do it, even if you only get part way through. Anyway, right, what we're going to do. Um, your first job is open your 2D design file and select by dragging an, a box around it all of your chosen front shape in acrylic. You're then going to go up to uh, edit copy as bitmap. Okay, just click OK to this. Um, right. What you now need to do is load up Microsoft Paint. I know it's a bit archaic, um, so I've got Paint down here, but you can find it by typing Paint in there. Okay, so load up Paint, and you're just going to do Control V. Now that should paste uh, your dinosaur straight onto the page. Okay. Now I'll just on yours. I just want to show you something. Um, your screen may be a bit bigger, and when you paste it, um, what we're going to need to do if your dinosaur is smaller than the picture don't size the dinosaur grab this little square in the corner and just bring it up to the two extreme edges of the picture there very important you do this it'll make your life a lot easier in a minute okay what you're going to now do is save this but save as a bitmap or a jpeg it doesn't actually matter uh, let's go bitmap and you're going to go and save it into the following location you're going to go to your documents on the network you should have a folder in there called Inventor, so go in there, and within there should be a folder that you made for your project called Nightlight Smart Product Design. Now mine is this one, Smart Product Design 2, because I've made two of them, but whatever you named your project, put it there. You can see where I've been experimenting, I've already put Dino in there, but save it in your project folder. Dino.bmp bitmap. Um, very important you save it in the right folder. Okay, If you're not sure where your folder is, give me a shout and I'll, I'll help you. Okay. So save it, you can then get rid of paint, you then don't need this. Next step is to go into Inventor, and if your model's not already open, go to Open, and open your assembly, remember, Nightlight Hole Assembly. And what we are working on is this acrylic bit, so double click on the acrylic bit, and I'm going to make a new sketch on the front of the acrylic bit. Alright, next job, go up to Image up here and select if you have put it in the right folder it should just automatically be there because you've put it in the folder where it needs to find it open dino or whatever you called yours now just click anywhere because what you'll find is it'll probably put it upside down or back to front now what we're going to do now you'll notice if i grab for some reason this corner allows you to drag it around this corner allows you to sort of rotate it and resize it so basically between these two corners i want you to drag this approximately to the right size and location it needs to go. All right, so we want it as accurate as we can, but we're actually just going to be tracing this, so it doesn't have to be mega spot on. Um, okay, do try and rotate it so it's straight though. That will make your life easier. All right, so that, that's pretty much there. Okay, right. And the way we're going to trace this, um, what we're going to do is we're going to now. I know it sounds odd. We're going to finish that sketch. Um, and actually no we're not we're going to stay on that sketch and what we're going to do is we're going to trace it Okay, and we're going to trace it using if you go to line but click on the arrow you'll get the spline tool um, spline tool we're going to basically trace all these curvy shapes now I would suggest you start on the edge so make sure your mouse kind of snaps to the edge and basically keep clicking Alright, now this will take a little while. The more clicks you do, the more accurate it will be. For some reason, it puts this stupid little toolbar wherever you click, and if you accidentally click that tick, it will end the use of the tool. 
infuriating I know I found it's a bit easier if you zoom in because it gets in the way less okay now when you get into the really small bits or really tight corners like this you need to click a lot more times to get round the tight corner right when you've got bigger sweeping straight lines you can do fewer clicks over a longer distance okay you'll get the hang of it it might take you a few practice runs all right so basically you're going to trace around the whole object try and speed this up as quick as I can if you're a super pro with mad skills bruv then you will be able to do this in one hit as in just join one end all the way around without any breaks okay now I'm deliberately gonna screw it up here I'm not gonna go in one go I'm gonna click the tick so I've obviously just drawn my line that far um, you obviously want to go all the way around so if you do end it just start again with the spline tool but make sure that the new line you draw on always starts on the end of the old one very important that little green blob appears all right uh, now if it's doing this thing where it's sort of I don't know if you can see what my mouse is doing it's jumping where it wants I think you can press shift or is it alt I can never remember which one it is oh sorry yeah hold down control on the keyboard while you're drawing and then you won't get that stupid jumping around effect okay yeah it's control Okay, so basically, finish tracing it. This is where those of you that picked a stupidly complicated design are going to regret it immediately. And this dinosaur isn't particularly great, to be honest, but um, there we go. If I was some kind of professional YouTuber, I'd probably pause the video now so you didn't have to sit through it. but. I had to suffer it so I'm gonna make you do the same now believe me I did search high and low to see if there's an easier way of doing this uh, in inventor annoyingly you can import graphics straight from 2d design but then for some reason inventors got this weird way of handling them and it doesn't actually join any of the lines together that it imports and it likes to crash the program every time you do it as well so for the sake of how much aggro it was it's actually a lot quicker to trace the thing uh, believe me okay right now when you get to the end very important that you join onto the end of the border if you like all right the very extreme edge right because we're trying to make a closed shape so when you clicked your last click it will still want to draw more just now you click the tick to say you're finished right so what we're looking is one continuous outline that goes all the way around okay the other thing you want to do um, I hope this works is get your line tool so click the arrow and change back to the straight line tool this will seem a bit weird at first but find where your line ended and we're just going to draw a shape around this in the white area that goes there we go from one end of that curvy line we drew all the way around to the other because what we're actually going to do is this entire area now we're going to cut out you'll see what I mean so click finish sketch now if all your lines are connected when you press extrude there we go legend it should automatically select it all um, if it doesn't and it, there doesn't appear to be an image to extrude you'll need to go back to the sketch here look click on it and try and find out have a look and see if there's any breakages or overlapping lines okay um, if this does happen to you you can right click and run this thing called the sketch doctor basically you uh, mine doesn't need it but this is what you do you click diagnose sketch it will look for any open loops or mistakes basically click OK mine says it's all fine yours will probably come up with a message saying we found one or two open loops do you wish to close them basically just click yes and OK and hopefully that will close up any holes uh, if it still doesn't work after that you'll have to uh, seek me for help but it will be because you've um, not joined two lines the other reason it can screw up is if you've got I'll just show you quickly if you draw around a corner sometimes it's possible to do this by accident where you end up with a loop the loop the program then freaks out if you've got a loop the loop um, because it doesn't know which of these two shapes you want to extrude alright so sorry to ramble a bit there but it's important detail so anyway hopefully for you it went all okay and when you finish your set sketch and go to extrude it will select it so all we've got to do here is select cut 
and make sure it's a, a decent distance doesn't really matter how far but we're cutting all the way through click OK and you'll see what that's done that's sliced out the outline of our dinosaur okay um, I'm just gonna go back actually and I'm gonna so I just did control Z there and I'm gonna go control Z one more time because I've realized I want to go back to the sketch because I forgot to do this little bit in between his legs there so I'm just gonna do that because I'm an obsessive perfectionist I believe if you're doing a job it's worth doing it properly all right there we go finish sketch extrude that bit and also that little bit as cuts brilliant so we've got our dino outline that looks a lot better now and it's in 3d um, what I'm now going to do is I want some detail on it so I'm going to click start 2d sketch I'm going to draw on it again and I'm going to put my picture in again don't ask me why it disappears I don't know but I'm going to put the picture in yet again uh, this time just do what I did last time rotate it around oh, cool. stick it in position and try my best to size it and line it up so that it matches with the dinosaur outline and this is a bit tricky to do as you can see because you can't really see what's behind it so just I'm, I'm sort of going by the width of it to get the right idea it's only got to be approximate anyway when you're done click finish sketch now you might think oh you've just messed it up no there is a very clever method you can do here um, there is the option to turn this into a decal which is the American word for decal and sticker uh, so it's saying select decal pick your image well that would be this so you just click on the sketch and then it's saying pick the face you want to stick your sticker to or your decal so stick on the face uh, click OK and you'll see what that's done that's basically cut the decal out and stuck it on, onto the front of our um, dinosaur alright so we can click return now that is probably the best approximation you're going to be able to get of how it would look but in 3D alright so save your work there that's a good time to save I'm just gonna pause the video while I go and figure something out alright so anyway what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put a battery in here and a USB cable just to make this look a little bit more uh, completely realistic so what we're gonna do um, you're gonna to go to uh, your folders so you know click however you'd access the student drives and you're gonna to browse to the student drive and apologies to people on YouTube because you won't have this uh, well people who aren't in my classes student drive technology so tech the usual place mr. winter uh, year 9 smart product design CAD video tutorials and then battery and USB cable models and what I want you to do is these two files in here just select both of them right click copy and then go into inventor go to place and right click on the window and paste okay can you see that's pasted your battery a battery model and down here a USB cable model into here now I've made these for you um, to save you some time but it's very important they're pasted into your project area hopefully you're starting to understand what this project malarkey is about everything right down to the picture has to be in this folder anyway so what we're going to place is a battery and a USB so I'm going to select both by holding control and click open click and then we don't want more than one of them so I right click and click OK now you'll see at the moment these guys are free to move around now if you made your model exactly as my plan they should be the right size uh, all we're gonna do is we're gonna stick the battery in here and we're gonna stick the cable in one of these holes here and then we'll be uh, we'll be done with it okay we could get really funny and model all the LEDs and stuff and if you've got time maybe you want to do that as an extension but I'm gonna make you make your own LED model and put them where they go anyway right to put the battery in our live will be a lot easier if I make this and this bit invisible so I can see what I'm doing so the bottom panel is over here it's highlighted I'm gonna right click untick visibility and the battery door is in the way as well so I'm gonna right click that visibility okay now you might also want to get rid of your battery shelves just visibility and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use constraints which you might remember from a few videos back and I'm going to stick my battery where I'd like to put it so I suggest that you mate one of the big long sides to the inside edge here like so and then mate the thin side to the underside of the lid like that 
and now our battery is free to move left and right and now we're going to mate that onto here okay so that's how we will fix your battery inside your circuit boards now I haven't modeled the circuit boards because all of you made your own and they're all different sizes but that will fit next to it here with the LEDs plugged in these holes there's enough room to get the battery snap on there um, that's pretty good and the last thing we're going to do is put the USB cable in so the USB cable is a little bit trickier we're going to um, constrain but because this is a round object now you're going to select not the circle but here can you see this sort of dotted axis appears so select that this is with mate by the way and then select this dotted line here I just got to get the phone hold on Right, sorry about that. Um, so anyway, yeah, select that axis, select this axis, click apply, and that should uh, line it up. Now it may do this, and it might be sort of back to front. Um, that's not a massive issue because what you can do is um, free rotate, and so I chose free rotate, and you can kind of just sort of roughly rotate it so it's facing sort of the right way. You know that'll do. Click OK. All right, and that should then snap back the other way. All right. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain it. Um, going to click Constrain. So again, C, and I'm going to go flush this time, and I'm going to pick the end of my wire, make it flush with the end of here. Apply. That will stop it sliding in and out. And now it's just free to flap around in the breeze like this. Um, to make it look sort of decent, uh, I'm going to do another constraint, and we're going to use a different one now. We're going to go to the second one along here, which means an angle. Uh, I'm going to pick this undirected angle here, and we're going to choose um, a straight edge along the horizontal. So, you know, like that there. And then I'm going to pick a straight edge on here. And basically, it will make these straight edges parallel, okay? There we go. Click apply. All right, so that's now fixed in three dimensions. Okay, make your um, bottom panel visible. And make your battery door and your battery shelf visible. And there you go. You have completely and utterly finished the 3D CAD model. So well done. Hopefully you're proud of yourself. So save your work. And what we're going to do now uh, the, is we're going to take some screenshots. Okay. So um, I'm actually going to stop that and do a seventh video because uh, that phone call was about some people that have turned up to meet me that didn't tell me they were turning up to meet me. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go meet them and I'll do the seventh video in a second. All right.